Hello everyone, it's Jeannie. How are you? I hope you are all well. Today's video I'm really excited about. It is a celebrate the 70s and it's a book actually. Um, People Magazine compiled the 70s into a book to show us the stars and the fads and the fashions from that pretty amazing decade. I loved that decade. But before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to today's sponsor, which is Wudogu. Wudogu is a wood block meets Sudoku Grid game, and it is a wonderful way to zen out, but also to work your brain. It's like working <laughs> your muscle. It, I think, helps your IQ and intelligence because you're really trying to figure out this puzzle and how things fit. And one of the things I love are the sounds of this game. Um, it doesn't have annoying blasts and bells and whistles, but it has nice, calm, little soft sounds that I love. There are hundreds of different levels, and they're all very challenging, and there are three different modes to play in. You arrange the wooden blocks to form lines and blocks vertically and horizontally in order to clear the board and score points. I love having some downtime and me time and turning that into a little bit of Zen workout for my brain. So click on the link and download this game. Like it helps my channel when you click on the link and do your download from there. So click on that link and play this game with me. It's a lot of fun. And so you can be training your brain along with me. <laughs> Watch out, world, right? Like I said, it's free to download, free to play. So join me in some brain exercises, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I am. Thank you to the folks at Wudoku for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video and providing the link to download on. So let's go ahead and get started now and walk through the 70s through People Magazines. Recap of the decade. So here we have the compilation of People's People magazines, decade of the 70s, celebrating the 70s, the stars, the fads, and fashions from an amazing decade. A couple things that I noticed in just flipping through this is that you don't see a lot of um, photo retouching that is obvious, like they are in today's magazines and today's photography. Blemishes are there, freckles are there, dark circles and lines are there. I see some cellulite here, and I like that. It's real. It is. It's real. I appreciate that more. I also notice just some bad photography here too. You know, um, there are photos 
taken here that wouldn't fly in today's magazines. But that's okay. This is the 70s. Another thing about that decade is, and I think I've mentioned this before, while there was a lot of great fashion, in my opinion, and it was my favorite decade in terms of just being alive and discovering and having discoveries all around me. It seemed like every year something new was coming. I mean, I remember when, you know, uh, I don't know, just all these things, microwaves in their homes or, um, you know, portable phones. Not so much. No, no. That really was more the 80s. But like the cooler, small phones, that princess phone, I had one of those. And, I don't know, cool cars, cool fashions, just a simpler time. But I was insulated, and there was a lot going on in the world. Um, big things, big news oppressed, or, you know, unrest, uprisings, um, riots, protests, things like that. We just weren't bombarded with it 24-7 like we are now. But there were some things going on. I liked that I was oblivious to most of it. I caught a few things here and there if I was around when my mom and dad were watching the evening news. And that's the only time you would get news is the evening news or in the morning paper. And I didn't read the paper. I mean, it was the drag. <laughs> so, I mean, the only time we looked at the paper was to see what time the movies were playing. And so, like I said, we were insulated. Our biggest challenge was finding each other on a weekend. And somehow we did without pagers, without cell phones, without find my friends, without computers. We found each other. You know, we had a few hangouts. One of our hangouts was a 7-Eleven on a particular corner. Another was a jack-in-the-box on a different corner, and so you just kind of cruised around until you found your, your, your crew. And uh, we did. We did. You know, weekends were about going out and just celebrating life and being together and cruising and listening to music or going to concerts. And I went to so many concerts. Uh, days on the Green uh, in Oakland, Oakland Coliseum. And we saw so many wonderful, wonderful bands from, my goodness, um, Peter Frampton, Fleetwood Mac, um, Led Zeppelin, uh, Leonard Skinner. Uh, uh, it just went, I mean, the list went on and on. And we just had the best time. But again, we didn't know about what was going on in the larger world. And I'm glad for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started flipping through this decade of the 70s. Okay, here we go with People celebrates the 70s. Stars, fads, and fashions from an amazing decade. And this, I don't know if you can see it, was 
$39.95. That's not what I paid, but um, that's a lot of money. When you guys give me that, um, buy me a cup of coffee, this is what I'm using it for to make purchases like that. So this is for all of you and thank you to those who bought me a cup of coffee and supported this. So, Mark and Mindy is what starts this. And then we've got John Travolta making one of his classic moves. He was so cute. And let's see, Farrah Fawcett and Lee Majors. They were an item. And uh, Cher. So we're going to go through some of these. And. Okay, Farrah Fawcett. Oh, she was a fashion icon, a sex symbol. Um, she. Her hairstyle, everybody wanted to be, you know, have this kind of hair and um, her style. And I tried to have her hair cut as well. And I don't know that I ever really captured it exactly. I'll, I'll try and find a, a uh, picture of me in the 70s. I know I could never do that. Was very big in the seventies, and John Travolta. He kind of had his start with Welcome Back, Cotter, at twenty-one years old, and then he, um, you know, really became famous with um, Saturday Night Fever, and that movie just really the disco scene onto, you know, everybody's um, Saturdays, the weekends. Um, it was just a, a, a huge hit. And everybody wanted to be out dancing. And so there was this world for me that was kind of rock and roll and disco. I loved it all. I loved it all. And the Jackson, the Jackson 5. And look at Michael here. You can see him kind of pre surgery. You know, say what you want about Michael Jackson. He was talented, you know. And I think he was really stunted too in terms of his childhood and just being thrust into the spotlight, you know. And he was, a, I think, I don't know. I don't know the true story about him, but I liked him a lot. I loved the music. Jackie Kennedy Onassis. This was, you know, President Kennedy's wife, of course, and then he was assassinated in 63, I think it was. And she married um, Aristotle Onassis, a very wealthy tycoon. I think he was Greek. And he left her a lot of money, like $20 million. And so she went to go work as a book editor in New York City. And just wanted to live a normal life. Burt Reynolds. Um, he was an icon. He was a funny actor. Um, and what I love about this picture is... He's got a gap here between his teeth. He's got his lines, and I think he's wearing a toupee a little bit. But um, he went and had that facelift, and it just, oh, it was awful, I think. Smokey and the Bandit. If you haven't seen that, put that on your list of a movie to see. It was really good. <laughs> and Dolly. Oh, Dolly. You know, she just celebrated, and still does, big hair, lots of makeup, lots of color, just, she's out there, loud and proud, and I love it. 
but she had a lot of crossover, you know, music as well, not just country. And then, of course, Cassius Clay, who, you know, became Muhammad Ali. I was not into boxing or fighting. Um, I just don't like violence. I don't like watching people hit each other. I never liked that. So, anyway, but my dad used to watch boxing. And, um, you know, he, lo he loved this George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. And he used to say, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And so, anyway. Oh, and Elvis. Now, the thing about Elvis in the 70s is his career was coming to an end. You know, he had been doing a lot of drugs. Um, I think a lot of prescription drugs. And eating too much. He was overweight. Um, maybe working too hard. And uh, he, his death is one of those things where you remember where you were when you heard about it. It was in August of 77, I think. And I know where I was at a friend's house. Yeah, kind of sad, that downfall. Okay, so some of the couples and fashion. Okay, leather jackets. Leather jackets. Everybody had leather jackets. That's um, Brian O'Neill and Burt Reynolds. I thought he was so cute. He was in a movie called Love Story. That was just... Uh, I watched it not too long ago, and it was kind of corny. But uh, <laughs> for then, it was really big. Three's Company. Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood. Now, these kind of pants were very popular, kind of a knit, tight, <laughs> and these knit shirts. Okay, now Rod Stewart was just out there, you know, because he's a performer, so purple, shiny fabric. And this is what a lot of guys wore to their weddings, tuxedos like this, colored with this trim, <laughs> this dark trim. And John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Barry Manilow, very colorful. Lonnie Anderson, oh my god, she was a sex symbol too. And let's see, Janis Joplin, gone too soon. Yeah, these are some John Foyt. Okay, some of the 70s style. Roller skating was kind of big in the 70s. I could never do this on my roller skates. Never, never, never. John Denver. Yeah, and the country boy, you know, but I... John Denver. In the 70s, for me, was someone I secretly liked. Actually, I secretly loved his music. But, you know, we were in the midst of rock and roll, going into disco a little bit, kind of both, you know. And his was kind of schmoozy. But I'll tell you something. I love John Denver. And there's an album he has now that I play over and over and over a lot. It's the Wildlife Concert and Red Rock, and um, it's an amazing album. Okay, Burt Reynolds, Sean Cassidy. I wasn't really into Sean, I was into his older brother, David. And Mary Tyler Moore. She was a real icon as well. Um, so what she's wearing here, I don't know if you can see, but it's shorts, like hot pants with nylons and boots. Yes, like this. This is Elizabeth Taylor, so the boots and hot pants. 
that cool? Oh, Raquel Welch could wear a burlap sack and look good. She was a bombshell. Oh, super sex symbol. And then as far as the hair, a couple of different, um, you know, you had the big poofy hair like this, you know, big lion's mane. These braids came in when Bo Derek did that movie, 10. That was 79, which was the end of the decade. The Farrah Fawcett hair, the afro, and the Dorothy Hamill wedge. So I had this and I had this. Tried. And muscle cars and the cars of the 70s. Now, these were kind of dorky cars, but most of my friends had cars like this. Um, 67 Camaro, 68 GTO, 71 Malibu. Um, I had a 66 Mustang. Uh, that was nice. I wish I had it. And I'll tell you something. I worked for that car. And every friend I had worked. We got a job as soon as we could every summer, whether it was in orchards picking fruit or selling fruit at roadside stands, um, babysitting, you name it, we worked and we saved up to buy our first car. Um, I remember I opened a banking uh, a savings account and my first deposit was like 92 cents and then a dollar 19 and on up. And I saved up $1,200 to buy my Mustang. And every friend I had, no parent gave them a car. Um, you know, so. The 70s home, and I'm going to just say, I never saw a house like this with a hot tub in the middle of the living room. That just wasn't something we ever saw. This is kind of. Maybe somebody who was rich and had a lot of money could do some, these wild styles, but it just, this is not a good representation of what a normal household looked like in the 70s. The normal um, average house. Now, the movies of the 70s, Star Wars, I remember lining up at one of the Century Theaters um, to see Star Wars, 1977, and it was awesome. You know, for that time, the photography, you know, all those, you know, the, 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 the Death Star and all those um, planes and the flying they did and the robotics and the sabers. still hear the music. Boom, 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 boom. Now, I lived about, I don't know, 35 minutes from Santa Cruz. 35, 45 minutes. And we used to go to the beach a lot. And <laughs> let me tell you something, back to the cars. A lot of us, those cars couldn't get over Highway 17 because they would over Highway 17 going over the Santa Cruz Mountains was kind of steep and windy and most cars would overheat. So when we went, we had to make sure it was in somebody's car who wouldn't overheat. Grease, of course, that was a fun movie and 1978 still is, you know, that was a great movie. The Exorcist, I did not like I read the book. I was a voracious reader. I loved reading. And so I saw the book, excuse me, I read the book and then saw the movie. And to me, the book freaked me out more than the movie ever did. When I finally saw the movie, it was as if it was a joke. 
because my imagination crippled me more than the movie. But I have friends who saw the movie and that flipped, you know, freaked them out. But for me, the book was way worse because it's your imagination and a, and a movie can't compete with your imagination. And of course, Superman, Close Encounters of the same of the Third Kind. This was a good movie. I like that. Saturday Night Fever. Boy. The Godfather. Oh. Moonraker, the James Bond movie. And Jaws 2. And Bo Derek. She was in the movie. Dudley Moore fell madly in love with her as a fantasy girl because she was jogging on the beach. This was the iconic look from that movie. The movie 10. And <laughs> Ronnie Howard from American Graffiti. The American Graffiti was a great movie. It was about the 50s. But it came out in the 70s. <laughs> so, to you younger folks, if you haven't seen this, here's some, here are some movies you can see, starting with Saturday Night Fever, American Graffiti, Smokey and the Bandit, that was really good. Um, Sally Field was also in this, and Blazing Saddles, one of my all-time favorites. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was another really great movie. The, the ending was a little sad, but Rocky. There we go. That's a Cinderella story about a no-name boxer who gets a shot at greatness. And Sylvester Stallone's kind of big breakout movie. So the original Rocky was my favorite. I was never a Woody Allen fan. I never got him or his humor. Just was not a fan of his. I loved this movie, Love Story. I've seen it like, I don't know, a year ago, and it was corny, but, you know, that's 40 some odd years later, 50 years later, but it was a good movie then. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Have you seen it? I was a huge fan. And we used to go and see it every weekend. And we were, I had friends who dressed up. And they did the role plays. Um, up on stage, we brought toast, you know, bread for toast. And it was a cult hit, cult classic. I love this movie. And we would see this movie, or Song Remains the Same. Um, it was a Led Zeppelin probably saw it, I don't know, a thousand times. I did not like Clockwork Orange. Did not like it. I do not like dystopian, futuristic, uh, violent movies. Never did. Um, too violent. The same thing with Carrie. Do not like it. Did not like it. I liked Norma Ray because that was a real type of character, you know? And these are called Urban Avengers. Look at this. Is that... Oh, she was just such a sexy superstar, I think. Um, whoops. What was it? Pam Greer. Oh my god, she was so beautiful. Superfly. That was another great movie. Some catchphrases from the 70s. Yo, Adrian. That was from some 
Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, these are great. You gotta ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you punk? Glad you started. I knew it was you, Frida. You broke my heart. Al Pacino and The Godfather. And then disco music. Oh my goodness. You know, pop, kind of pop music, like the Donny Osmond and that kind of stuff was ending. But that whole dance revolution of disco music really coming onto the scene hard in Donna Summer, you know, um, was very big in that. I loved her. I loved her music, too. Oh, and the Bee Gees. There are some um, Instagram pages or, you know, where they isolate the voices and take away the music, and you can hear the brilliant harmonies of these guys, these brothers, and just what a talent, what a talent. If you can find that, like on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, Facebook, and Patti LaBelle, what a voice, oh my goodness, she was amazing. Look at those outfits. Lady Mama. Okay, so there was a place, a club called Studio 54 in New York that was wild, unabashedly wild. Drugs flowed freely. It was a disco. It was music. It was anything goes. All of who's who were there. And um, I never went there. Um, I'd only been to upstate New York in the 70s. That was Fort Plain, New York in the 70s. Never went here. And I don't think I would have wanted to. I'm too crazy, too wild. You know, like a Bianca Jagger. Just, you know, uh, crazy. Grace Jones, just. Oh, Elton John, crazy, fun, and talented. Yeah. I loved the Eagles. I saw them in Oakland, one of the Oakland uh, Day on the Greens in the 70s. And what, oh, what a concert. I saw everybody in the 70s. Peter Frampton, Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, Led Zeppelin. Um, oh my goodness. And on and on and on. It just, uh, yeah, the 70s were awesome for that. I loved Glenn Fry. And James Taylor and Carol King. Her big album, Tapestry, was, oh my god, to me, that is so iconic, 70s. She's sitting there, in a like on a bench window seat, in her jeans, and I wanted to be that, whatever that was, it just was the 70s. And, you know, he just had amazing music as well. Oh, Pink Floyd. I loved Pink Floyd. And in the 70s, I was really into the, the albums from before Dark Side of the Moon, like Uma Guma and uh, things like that. And even back as far as Sid Barrett playing with them, you know, very crazy story. 
very sad story. But their huge album, you know, Dark Side of the Moon was just amazing. I love them. I've seen them too. And of course, Fleetwood Mac saw them. That was a great concert. Such a great concert. And the Carpenters. Who didn't love the Carpenters? Um, and her tragic life. Karen Carpenter's tragic life. She died of anorexia nervosa. She thought she needed to be thinner. She couldn't eat. And just so sad. So sad. Totally not rock and roll. Just sweet, beautiful music. And what a voice. Oh, and Abba. If you have not seen Mamma Mia, you must see it because that's the music of Mama, of Abba. But yeah, look at this fashion. Look at that fashion. Oh, and very mellow. Look at those sleeves. Oh, ay, 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 the village people. Oh, loved them. Macho, macho man. Or the YMCA. Barry White. I loved his love songs. What a voice. What a love voice. He died of kidney failure in the early 2000s. Carly Simon, another iconic voice from the 70s. I was into David Bowie in the 70s. More in the 80s, but not the 70s. I did like Captain and Tennille. I loved that song. Must grab love, and love will keep us together. Those, those were fun songs. I never got into reggae, just didn't. But Bob Marley was um, just an amazing musician, I think. Uh, you know, th there was that whole Rastafarian movement as well. And really sad, you know, he died of cancer in 81. Um, I never got into punk music. Never, never, never. It just didn't, didn't appeal to me at all. And, you know, I never was a big fan of Sean Cassidy. I like David Cassidy, of course. I had a huge crush on David, but not on Sean. It was too bubblegumish for me. I have friends who love the Bay City Rollers. I was not a fan. Donny Osmond, the Osmond Brothers, so so. I think I like the Jacksons, the Jackson Five, more than the Osmonds. And Life Garrett, same thing. I just wasn't a huge fan. I don't know who this guy is. Rick Smith. I, um, yeah, I just don't know who he is. You know, hot body and everything. Oh, here's my love. Here he is. Hello, David. Hello, my David. How are you? Yeah. He passed away way too soon as well. Not a big Robbie Benson fan. Too cute. Too popsy, I think. I don't know. Okay, who sang it? So you've got to know when to hold on, know when to fold up. Kenny Rogers. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. What a good friend of mine. And we saw them. Three Dog Night. Awesome, awesome concert. Oh my goodness. If you want my body and you think I'm sexy, Rod Stewart. I am a woman, hear me roar, in numbers too big to an hell and ready. Oh my goodness. Charlie's Angels. Now, I was a blonde in the 70s, but I remember thinking, she was the pretty one. 
Jacqueline, not Farrah, but Jacqueline Smith. Um, yeah, Jacqueline Smith. I thought she was gorgeous, and I thought dark hair was the most beautiful thing. And I find it funny that, you know, girls are such that many of them want to be something they are not. Just something they are not. Rather than embracing who we are. Chase something you are not. Mary Tyler Moore. That was a fun show. That was a really great show. I saw her biography on the airplane uh, coming home from Germany last week, and it was a really interesting biography. I would suggest, if you can see it, see it. All in the Family. That was... Um, you know, I think it was tongue-in-cheek, this guy, you know, super bigoted and, you know, lots of racially and sexually, politically, religiously, you know, he would say everything that was just inflammatory. And you couldn't get away with that today, but it was, you know, Carol O'Connor was not really that way in real life, you know. Have you all seen MASH? This would be one of those programs that I would say buy all of them. Get the whole kit and caboodle and watch them all. They were so good. Okay. Saturday Night Live. This was wonderful. It was a great uh, time. Lots of drugs. Lots of... Uh, Improv, but funny as all heck, you know. All of these actors, Garrett Morris, Chevy Chase, Gilda Radner, Jane Curtin, John Belushi, Lorraine Newman, they were so talented. Dan Aykroyd. Oh, and Roots. Yes, groundbreaking. I don't think there was anything, any movie that had depicted slavery before this. And who wrote this? Alex Haley. Now see, I read the book before I saw this, and I think it was done very, very well. Really well. So if you haven't seen it, you should see it. Oh, Happy Days. Happy Days. Everybody saw, watched Happy Days and Fonzie. And, uh, yeah, it was just, just a great, just a great show. Good family show. As was the Pretty Bunch. You know, I, I wanted to be like Marsha. <laughs> the Dukes of Hazzard. Look at those shorts. Daisy Dukes. And Mark and Mindy, of course. Nanu Nanu. And Laverne and Shirley. And Laverne and Shirley, I think, followed Happy Days. That was the lineup, I think. The Gong Show. So, so, I wasn't a huge fan of that. Three's Company. Eh, I saw it, but I wasn't a, like, a raving fan. Okay, who said it? Dino Might. That was JJ. Jimmy Walker. J.J. Evans from Good Times. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Jan Brady. Good night, John Boy. The Waltons. That's another very 70s show. The Waltons. <sighs> Stifle yourself, Edith. Archie Bunker. And all in the family. I don't remember all the details of this politically because I just didn't care. You know, politics weren't something that, um, you know, I was into. I remember seeing this on the 5 o'clock news, but it just wasn't something that I followed. You know, we just didn't. Uh, same thing, I heard about the Kent State shootings in Ohio, and this, I knew it um, 
spurred, you know, was the inspiration for the song of Neil Young. Um, you know, four dead in Ohio. And, uh, yeah, that was a really big, charged, supercharged time. The riots at Kent State University. The Iran hostage crisis. I remember, you know, hearing about that. And the fall of Saigon. I remember this on the news in the 70s, trying to get all these people out. It was just... <sighs> but again, I didn't know a lot about this. You know, I didn't follow it. My biggest challenge was finding my friends on weekends, you know? not We didn't have 24-7 news. We just didn't. Oh, Three Mile Island, I do remember um, hearing about that because it was very scary. You know, was there going to be a huge, uh, you know, radioactive gas cloud over the world? You know? And the Jonestown Massacre. I remember when this happened. It was November of 78, I believe, because we were in Hawaii, on Maui, for Thanksgiving when this happened. Oh my gosh, and it was breaking news. God. Whoa. And Patty Hearst, the abduction of Patty Hearst, and because I'm from the Bay Area um, of California, this was a huge deal. She was kidnapped by the SLA, and then she was seen later helping to rob banks, you know, with a machine gun, you know. Um, they say that, you know, she was brainwashed by her captors. And Mark Spitz, look at him, he was a sex symbol, and he uh, just did so well in the Olympics, the 72 Olympics in Munich. And, uh, yeah, lots of endorsements for him. Billy Jean King and, uh, what was his name? Billy Rick? No, um, Billy Jean King, Tom, Bobby Rick, Bobby Riggs. It was the battle of the sexes, and King crushed him. And, uh, yeah, so she showed that a woman could play tennis just as well as a man. And Nadia Comaneci, the, Ro the Romanian um, gymnast at the Olympics in 76. If you haven't heard Nadia's theme, or I think it was called Nadia's theme or Nadia's song, Google that and hear it. It was so pretty, so pretty. All about the gymnast, Nadia Comaneci. She was so tiny and she got seven tens. Perfect scores. Oh, Bruce Jenner, look at him. He was amazing. Um, he won the 76th decathlon in Montreal Olympics and just was a physical superstar. Some books, what we read. Okay, um, let's see, da, 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 the right stuff. Okay, Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach. One of my all-time favorites. If you could read that, please do. There's my recommendation for you. I'm okay, you're okay. That was kind of a, a really popular self-help type book, you know, relating. Uh, Erica John, Fear of Flying, everything you always wanted to know about sex, but were afraid to ask. <laughs> Revolutionary books. Okay, romances, great celebrity romances, Mick Jagger and Bianca. I thought she was so beautiful. Lee Majors and Farrah Fawcett, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. And then it 
was Farrah Fawcett and Ryan O'Neill. Warren Beatty. Um, Michelle Phillips. And then Diane Keaton. Oh my gosh, he was a playboy. And then Cher married Greg Holman. <laughs> totally 70s outfit on him. Gloria Steinem was an amazing um, feminist and real, you know, uh, uh, putting feminine, uh, feminine uh, feminism out there and yeah, front line to that. I remember watching Evil, Evil Knievel the, what was it, the Grand Canyon and the Snake River, the Snake River Canyon, that's what it was, 1,600 foot wide, and he failed and his parachute deployed early, so, yeah, he was kind of crazy, and streakers, streakers were very popular, there's actually a song that came out called The Streak, if you haven't heard it, Google it, it's called the streak. And they called him the streak. <laughs> I don't know this. Oh, the whole earth catalog. And Werner Earhart and Est was very big in the 70s. And I have to tell you, I did the Est seminar in 78 or 79. And it was pretty mind-opening, and I still refer back to a lot of what we learned in that weekend, and mostly it was about self-awareness and challenging yourself to go beyond your own story. And a lot of people have stories, and it's about putting it down, and it's like, I get it. It's over. It's done. Move on. And I know that sounds easy, but this is what we really got out of that weekend. And getting it. Getting yourself, self-awareness, and getting other people, like, understanding. It's a very interesting time, but I'm, I'm grateful for the time I did with Est. I really am. Oh, okay. Pet rocks. Everyone had a pet rock. Everybody had a pet rock. And mood rings. Everybody had a mood ring. Not everybody wore men's platform shoes. But earth shoes were very, very popular. They, the way they formed on the bottom of the foot. And smiley buttons were super, super, super. Uh, popular. Everybody had smiley buttons or a t-shirt that had the smile on it. And things we were saying goodbye to. The rotary desk phone. The slimline princess phones were coming in. And video cameras like this. Slide rules. Roller skates started, you know, then the inline skates came in. And then 8-track. We had 8-track tape. And I thought those were so state-of-the-art. And then albums and cassette, you know, um, cassette tapes came in, of course. Okay, when we first met these people on the cover, David Bowie, Jack Nicholson, Goldie Mon, Mark and Mindy, Cher. I'm surprised they didn't have more Led Zeppelin in here. I was a huge Led Zeppelin fan. Still love Jimmy Page and Robert Plant and John Paul Jones. I think, and you know, sadly we lost John Bonham, but uh, I was a huge Led Zeppelin fan. Brooke Shields, she was in that movie Pretty Baby, and it was very controversial because it was very pornographic. So, some of the covers from People Magazine. Oh, Peter Frampton, I saw Peter. He was so cute. He was so cute. 
south end of Ronstadt. The Cheryl Teaks was a super huge, super huge model. Joe Naiman, the Telly Savalas. And that's it. There I is it on the back. Mary Tyler Moore, Donna Summers, David Cassidy. Well, what are your thoughts? I would like to know what your favorite thing was. Was it the fashion? The music? So I'm going to sign off for now. I have another one of these books and it celebrate the 80s. I know many of you have been interested in the 80s and I will do another video celebrating the 80s and their look and their fashion and their music and so I hope you will enjoy that. Thank you again to my sponsor, Wudoku. Click on that link and try that game and tell me what you think. I've been playing it and playing it. It's a mind brain exercise. Sometimes I don't do really well. <laughs> so, I wish you so much love, happiness, joy, I pray so much peace upon you and this planet. So much. Go out in the world and spread love. Smile at someone today for no reason at all. Do an act of kindness. Spread needs it. I will say goodbye for now and see you in the next video.